Pro Planner is positioned between product engineering and manufacturing operations. Pro Planner's process planning solution provides information on how to build the product. This is often triggered by changes in product design. In other words, whenever the product engineering is making changes to the product, that would trigger or that would impact the way the product is being built on the line and therefore the process plan that's involved in changing that product. This video will cover the process or the approach that ProPlanner takes in implementing an engineering change to the shop floor. Engineering systems will typically release ECOs or ECNs to let all the groups know what the engineering changes are. ProPlanner's ECO module will queue these changes so that every group in, in using ProPlanner is aware of what these changes are and can review them in the order they will receive from engineering. In this example, we are looking at an ECO where there are about 18 or 19 assemblies that are being impacted. We will focus on this one particular assembly, this fold assembly. As I click on that assembly, the system highlights to me the changes that are being sent by engineering. The E-bomb is the, is the bill of material view of engineering and the M-bomb is the bill of material view of what we previously had or manufacturing or what was being manufactured on the floor. As you can see, there are two new parts being added. Well, there is one part that's already in the system that's being added that's highlighted in green here and there is a brand new part, a part that does not exist anywhere and is being brought in for the first time through this particular ECO. And that's being highlighted with this new flag. These are important flags to let engineers know because the process planning and every other downstream operation would be impacted if it's a brand new part that they've never seen till now. So there are two parts being added and there are about five parts that are being timed out or removed from the end bar. There are some revision changes also here, but we'll ignore those for now. We'll focus purely on the added parts and the timed out parts. Now that we are aware of what product changes have been implemented, we would like to find out what is going on from a process standpoint. As was the case in this ECO, as we looked at earlier, there is a bracket and hardware that is being added and it's re replacing an existing bracket and all the hardware that goes with it. So in order to first figure out where this change is going to be, we need to find out the process where the existing bracket and hardware are being consumed. In order to do that, Pro Planner's consumption workbench is a great tool that enables that for us. As you can see, the new assembly, the new revision of the assembly is already loaded in the workbench and we are now going to ask the consumption workbench to find out where this revision, where this assembly is currently being consumed. As it goes through the process of locating from the thousands of processes that are out there, it narrows it down to the main line, which is a which is a routing or a line up there, and on the main line, it's saying on at station 06 is where you're currently consuming the old bracket and the hardware. As we look further into the st in station six, we see that it's pointing to us that there are two parts that have to be added yet, and it's also saying that there are five parts that are no longer in the end bomb that need to be taken out of consumption. Well, first things first, we need to locate where these five parts are being consumed. I simply right click on the bracket and I say find me the parent process. It narrows it down to that one particular activity. Before making the changes to that activity, that is before adding the new hardware and bracket to that activity, the engineers typically would like to see what the existing process looks like and how the product is put together up to this point on the, on the assembly line. In order to see what the product looks like at this point on the assembly line, we'll simply navigate away from the consumption workbench to the virtual build module. In the virtual build module, we have navigated to that activity that we were looking at in the workbench. As you can see on the right hand side, the product structure has built up to that point on the line is visible. We have also created views based on what is relevant to this activity. We wanted to highlight the bracket and the different views of the bracket. 
The views are important to the, um, the manufacturing engineer. As there are several parts being consumed prior to the station, it's important to highlight the parts that are relevant to that activity. The views allow you to do that. We store the rotation, the color coding, the orientation of the part, as and everything else that was hidden and shown up until that point. We save that, save those settings against the activity as views. As you can see there are two views here on the same CAD model. This, these views are further used in creation of the work instruction image or the work instruction or we, as we call the SOP image. It, this is the most important image that, that the user wants or the ME wants to use to convey to the operator on the line. In this case, the brackets were called out. I have call outs associated to them, which are then relevant to the work instructions or the instructions that are written to the operator. This is the main purpose of having the views and creating it, taking images from that particular uh, activity. Now that I have my old hardware and old brackets viewed and I understand the process and I know how this comes together, there's one last thing that is important here. All of this information, the SCAD model that we are looking at, has been loaded against the old revision of the product. You know, right now we were looking at the latest revision of the product. This is revision three of the product where, and the CAD model loaded with that is, is the old CAD model and that's what contains the old bracket and the old hardware. The next steps for us would be to update the consumption. That is, take the bill of material data, the newly added parts, add them to the process, take the old, pro uh, take the old products, all the old hardware and brackets out of the process and then compare that data to the new CAD model, revision 4. How do we know it's revision 4? The ECO that was sent to us has a drawing revision information with it. This is a part of the process in this particular, in this particular setup. And that tells us that revision 4 of the drawing is the most relevant revision for this particular change that is being sent. After identifying the, the activity and the current state of the of the model we have now we are now going to make changes to the consumption in order to do that we've already gone ahead and added the new parts that were being consumed we took out the old parts as you can see it's only on the left which is the existing view of the of the activity and now our consumption is up to date I'm going to close the workbench and go back to the virtual build module to look at what this looks like with the new CAD model So, in order to get this working with the new CAD model, we have to load the new CAD model. And that is what exactly what I have done here. You can see I have removed, I have taken out revision 3 of the CAD and I have loaded revision 4 of the CAD. And again, on my activity with the consumption already updated, you can see my, my five parts, the, the bracket and the four hardware components that went with it, are no longer there. My new bolt and my new bracket have been loaded. In order to look at this better, I have created a cross-sectional view of that particular product. So you can see that is the new bracket in there. And this is what I'm going to eventually use as my work instruction image. And I've also isolated the bracket separately to show to the operator what the new bracket looks like. From the, sec from the views that I have created, I can now use those as my new work instruction images. In order to do that, I simply open my existing work instruction image, delete the old views that I had, and replace them with the new ones that I've just created. These views now become my new work instruction image for the operator to look at in, in, on the shop floor.